Greetings everyone and welcome and Steve Jackson Sorcery Part 4 The Crown of Kings Man, I, ah, I'm so excited I didn't really believe I gonna get that far in this game But here we are with the last final sorcery chapter So we had our cloud name, didn't we? Oh, I can just type. Vadasa. This is actually what we end up with. And this is actually the same one which we had from Sorcery 1 to Sorcery 2 or from Sorcery 2 to Sorcery 3. I don't really remember. I think from 2 to 3. He defeated, defeated four of the seven serpents and saved Kare from the marsh goblins. Marsh goblins were in the in the sorcery too. Uh, we saved Kare from marsh goblins. So this is I really like this aspect. It remembers all your what you did. Time to continue our adventure. There is a legend. Long ago, or so they say, the ancient world has prosperous and free, from the Kakabat and sea to Lake Lumle. Harvests were plentiful, people were happy, all was at peace. Even the thundering skies were calm, tamed by the arts of the sorcerers of Mapang. Then everything changed. A fearsome sorcerer leveled the cities and turned the fields to dust with towers of devastating light. He heard no plea. Cutting down village after village, the mages scrabbled to defend the ancient world, but they were weak. Finally, the last archmage sealed the walls of Mapang and sent out seven deadly serpents to keep the dark sorcerer away. My god, this is like they talking about me. They failed. And now here you are, climbing to narrow paths into the mountains of High Zeman. The price of your journey across the backlands has already been paid. Now the Anuland is coming to Mapang and nothing will be allowed to stand in his path. The crown will be yours. Oh my god, look at this map. This is... this is great. Night has fallen. You climb an ancient staircase. The steps barely visible in the dark. There is no time to look back. You keep up a steady pace. Wind whistles down the gully trying to turn you back. You do not need to open your pack to check your provision, you have nothing. But at least you have three portions of rough meat and fish which will be edible if you can find a way to cook them and the distance black smoke cools upwards. You draw your board sword, an inch from its cupboard, its edge flashing in the moonlight. The blade is decent, if hardly heroic, but it should suffocate. Piling up your hood against the freezing air, you stride onwards into the dark. You must not linger out here. Wow. Man, this map. Look at it. There is the fortress. And we can rotate around it. This is new. The map is not even... Oh, I really like that. This is quite a change. This is quite a road ahead of us. Journey onwards. You reflect on your progress with a heavy heart as you climb. The backlands were a cursed place and your journey across them was too slow. The serpent's message must have reached their master by now. You walk on moving as quickly as you can through the narrow pass. 
The Zanzunu peaks rise on either side like jagged teeth. The path winds back and forth as it gleams and glimpses of the brooding horror of map and come and go. Night has fallen and the path will be treacherous. You should find somewhere to rest as soon as possible. Another night in the wilderness will not make any difference. The remaining serpents will surely have reached their master by now regardless. You look aside for some to cool up and sleep, but there is no shelter on the stony slopes. You watch the skies as you climb, staying alert for signs of the fearsome beardmen that parted the peaks, the eyes and ears of the archmage. Route undergrowth springs up shadowing the path on the either side. Hmm. Also I should mention Thank God my deck story picks up this sorcery again because only the first one kind of it was picking up and then it kind of stopped it. <laughs> Which makes me happy because my fights will be smaller. Hmm. I want to use Sun Jewel. That sounds like a good idea. You cast the spell and the Sun Jewel in your pack begins to pulse and torp with a brilliant blinding light. The sudden light disturbs something in the bushes, and a moment later, Spike Half has slept into the air. Talons out screech it. It knocks you backwards and swoops around for more. Let's fight him. Oh man, he is quite big. You roll, draw your sword ready to strike at the Hofk. You wait for the Spike Half wide wings open, then your blade sings as it parts in the air. The spike half tumbles as it tries to lift itself away, but it cannot move its wings. It collapses to the grass and the light in its eyes goes dark. One stamina lost. Not bad. The night air falls quiet. The beard broken body does not twitch. Yeah, I think we could. You lay back down, turning the trampled nest over to use it as a pillow. It will suffocate. You have not yet eaten today, but you have no rations to ease your hunger. Although the purple leaves you look, took from herbalists might be edible. Crap, let's try it. I have bad feeling about this. You take a deep breath and pull out the purple leaves you took from the herbalist hut. They are certainly thick and juicy and maybe sustaining if they do not poison you first. You nibble the corner of one leaf. Uncertain what you are hoping for. It's this thick, fleshy plant. It tastes bitter, but many leaves do. You do not drop down that. Oh! You take a deep breath and then eat the left hole. It is hardly pleasant, but it manages to fill you up a little. If there are any ill effects, you do not notice them immediately. Then you close your eyes and let your tiredness overtake you. The long night is filled with visions. You are standing on top of a tall black tiled tower, clinging onto its tiles with one hand while with the other you wave something in the air. You look in your hand to find you are holding nothing less than the crown itself. And then you hear a crawling sound and a great shape moves towards you. A beardman? No. A gold crest eagle shimmering into view. The side must have seen you. They are taking you home. By the bushes. During the past day we began to ascend into the mountains. The Archmage is aware of me. You wake in the rough scrap. Midges sunshine floods the sky blue dead. Looking down to where you slept you see the remains of a few half eggs and the crushed bodies of two small spike half chicks. There is nothing else, nothing to eat or salvage, the flies have already found the beer's carcass, you resume to clean up the endless stairs. Almost there. There is an unshakable gloom about this place, a few birds are singing thin and miserable songs. You reach the top of the stairs, rounding the corner you find three cave mouths set into the rock. The thing is, this game is a lot about exploring. But you never know what risk do you take, because sometimes you might just die or you must might lose too, too much health to actually progress further. You regard the caves with interest. The middle cave has the smallest entrance and probably opens into a niche and nothing more. The nearest cave would be large enough for a fire, but looks deep enough to contain any number of nasty surprises. A series of hoof pins lead into the mouth of the furthest cave. You 
Take a closer look at the hoof prints. They are deep, enough to suggest a largish creature, but they are no longer fresh. They are at least a few days old. You also note there are no prints coming out of the cave. I feel like I don't want to lose stamina. So I think the best... Oh, there is no S. So at the moment I can't really... I can't really cast Sus, which is sense danger. How? Find safe passage. Huh, this is like, instead of Sus, that might be... Let's try it. Looking at the start, you craft the magic and familiar calm voice begins to speak to you. Every cave has its dangers. The smallest cave requires courage to largest brown. But what the third cave requires you never find out as the spell fades once more. Oh man, should we try it? Hmm. I think, like, the smartest idea would be not go into the caves. But since there is an option, I mean, there might be something something useful in them, right? It has to be. I mean, okay, I don't want this episode to be too long, so I think we're gonna stop here. This will be a nice, nice little introduction to the another sorcery episode. I hope you guys are still excited for this game. This is like the longest series on my channel I have so far. But damn, I'm enjoying it so, so much. So I don't mind that there will be another like 20 or so episode. <laughs> Just look at this place. There is so many stuff there. Ooh, here is a broken... Broken piece. But I don't think we are able to get to there this way. Interesting. The other side? No. I think the mine entrance... Ooh, or this side, door here. That's something. Yeah, we're gonna explore more of High Zeman in the next episode. I hope you enjoy. Let me know if you did. And I'm gonna see you with more sorcery next week, next Friday. But till then, have a lovely weekend and... Farewell.